have a major update on the expiring AEW contracts of the Elite, and is Brawl Out set to be turned into a work? But first, let's take a look at the key stories coming out of last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. The show would kick off with a match between Adam Cole and AEW World Champion MJF, and were Cole able to secure the win, he'd earn himself a future shot at the title. After a hard-fought battle, the bout would end in a brilliantly executed time limit draw, with the bell ringing just as the referee was about to count to three for an Adam Cole victory. It's worth noting that whilst there is usually some leeway given time-wise for these type of angles, according to John Pollock of Post Wrestling, the bell rang at the legitimate 30 minute mark. This would lead to the former leader of the Undisputed Era calling for five more minutes with the champ. However, MJF wasn't so keen on the idea, leaving Cole's status as a future contender up in the air. And next, a match has been teased between two former WCW and WWE names that have yet to cross paths. The show would see the Jericho Appreciation Society's Sammy Guevara hit the ring, where he would discuss the recent news that he and his wife Ty Mello were expecting a baby girl, this before being interrupted by Darby Allen, who tried to persuade Sammy to the good side, noting how the fans were starting to get behind him. Chris Jericho would then make his presence known, threatening Darby to a two-on-one beatdown at the hands of he and Guevara, however Sting would show up to even the odds, this all while Sammy looked conflicted between both sides. Le Champion would then hold his baseball bat up to the throat of the Stinger before Sting did the same back, a clear tease that the two could be set to clash inside the squared circle at some point in the future in what would be Sting's first singles match in AEW. The confrontation follows a recent tweet from Chris Jericho where he responded to a fan that called for a match with Sting, with him outright denying any interest in the possibility. It seems like something was brewing behind the scenes all along. Later in the show, two World Championship matches were announced for the Forbidden Door. The first reveal would see IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sanada appear in a pre-taped promo with him speaking his native Japanese, issuing an open challenge to the AEW locker room for a shot at his title. This would then be followed by a backstage interview with Hook and Jungle Boy, with the latter accepting the challenge as he looks to pick up some singles gold for himself. He would then ask his Jungle Hook tag partner to be in his corner at the pay-per-view, although I get the vibe that a Jack Perry heel turn could be on the cards. Later in the night, Hiroshi Tanahashi would later speak on a pre-taped promo, challenging AEW World Champion MJF to a match at the Forbidden Door, an idea that he wasn't so keen on. Rene Paquette would then approach Max backstage for a response, who had some harsh words for the ace, and he would say, I'm gonna say no to that one actually. I'm gonna say no to that one actually. Don't feel like giving a world title shot to some rando from a rinky dink indie fed in Japan. As far as Tony Khan booking me for a matchup, it wouldn't be the first time I no showed something somebody booked me for. So yeah, Tanahashi, sorry, no can do, bud. Despite the refusal to work the show, MJF and Hiroshi Tanahashi was confirmed by a graphic later in the night, with the storyline heading into the match being whether the AEW World Champion will no show or not. But what do you make of the two huge title matches that were added to the Forbidden Door? Let me know in the comments down below. And next, AEW Dynamite would close with a whole bunch of surprises. The main event of the show would see the Elite's Hangman Page and the Young Bucks team up against Blackpool Combat Club's John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, and Claudio Castagnoli, with the Elite walking away with the win. It was the aftermath that caught the headlines, however, as after Claudio kick-started a brawl in the ring, old rival Eddie Kingston would make his return to AEW television to confront him, with the two going at it. This is the first time Eddie's been seen on AEW television since kayfabe quitting, the company to begin a run in Ring of Honor. After Kingston clotheslined Castagnoli out of the ring, he would then come face to face with John Moxley, with him seemingly caught between his hatred for Swiss and his friendship for Mox. Kanosuke Takeshita would then wipe Eddie out before taking out Nick Jackson, this before Kenny Omega appeared to catch him off guard, leading to a fist fight and super kicks from the books to Takeshita. The returns didn't end there, however, as Omega's Forbidden Door opponent, Will Ospreay, would show up to take him out with a hidden blade resulting in the Brit being the last man standing in the centre of the ring. The angle furthers multiple rivalries at once, with the most prominent being the battle for the IWGP United States Championship between Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay, a candidate for the Forbidden Door main event. 
Prior to last night's episode of AEW Dynamite, news broke via Fightful Select that former ROH World Tag Team Champion Jimmy Jacobs was backstage at the tapings, somebody who has more recently made a name for himself as a writer and producer. A follow-up report would then drop on the Wrestling Observer website that confirmed that Jacobs had officially left his role in Impact Wrestling, where he was a member of the creative team, with him taking up a similar role in AEW. Jacobs received huge praise for his time in WWE as a member of the writing staff between in the years of 2015 and 2017, with him playing a key role in the development of the Chris Jericho list gimmick, as well as the subsequent allegiance and rivalry between Y2J and Kevin Owens, which peaked at the infamous Festival of Friendship. Jimmy would then later be fired from WWE in 2017 after taking a photograph of himself and the members of the Bullet Club during their invasion of Monday Night Raw for being the elite, making his new job at AEW somewhat fitting. And next we have the latest surrounding the expiring contracts of the Elite. By the end of the year, the AEW contracts of Kenny Omega, Hangman Page and the Young Bucks will have come to an end, with both sides locked in talks over an extension to the deals. According to a fresh report from Fightful Select, AEW were confident that an agreement can be made, although nothing has been signed as of yet, and the report notes, both sides have felt like several deals had been close, with one side noting that could have been set for several months and not a lot had changed on that front. Those we spoke to in AEW were confident they'd retain the Elite despite CM Punk returning to the company. We've not been given any updates on Elite and their willingness to work with Punk, though Creative has planned for several of them for quite some time. As for potential interest outside of AEW, Fightful would reveal that there would be interest from WWE were that to be an option, and they would add, We're told by WWE sources that they would absolutely have interest in all four talent in the event they become available, but that they don't actually expect that to happen, and that WWE are nowhere near being legally allowed to talk to any of them. There were rumours that the Young Bucks had reached out to WWE last year, but sources close to them denied it. The report concluded by noting that sources within AEW expect that Hangman, Omega and the Bucks will receive significant raises if new deals are signed, with us now waiting news on if or when terms can be agreed. And next up is Brawl Out, set to be turned into a work. As we all know, CM Punk is expected to make his AEW return this Saturday night on Collision, with him booked for a match which will see him team with FTR to take on Samoa Joe and Bullet Club Gold's Jay White and Juice Robinson. Earlier today, Wade Keller of PW Torch would hint that something is set to be released media-wise that may cause some issues backstage in AEW, with Fightful Select since adding context to the claim. Before we get into the story, it's worth remembering that Punk has signed non-disparagement documents, meaning he can't speak ill of the company or those involved in Brawl Out, meaning he is very unlikely to have gone into business for himself, so to speak, which makes this story extremely interesting. According to the report, AEW arranged for an interview between Punk and ESPN, which took place last week, with them revealing some details on what it could contain, and Fight Forward write, Last week, Fightful Select reported that Kenta vs CM Punk was the planned direction for AEW Forbidden Door. Shortly following that, we were told that Punk wasn't thrilled with working with Kenta and he may come across badly in an interview. However, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye, and that may have been by design. The phrase that the controversy may have been by design is certainly an interesting one, with it unclear if this was intended by Punk on his own or by AEW as a company. With that said, Kenta may not have been the only one on the brunt of Punk's words, as Fightful would claim, we're told that an ESPN interview is supposed to drop sometime soon, where Punk was talking about a number of topics. Among those topics was the Elite, and word got back to several on the roster at the June 14 AEW Dynamite tapings, and some of it didn't go over well, based on second-hand reports of what Punk said, which could be seen as his version of what is true. Fightful would note that AEW did set up the interview, and what Punk spoke about would blur the lines and create buzz for upcoming shows. Interestingly, Fightful heard that he'd answered questions in a way that would make the audience wonder if it was him angling for a story, or if he was shooting from the hip. We now wait to see if these comments will make the final cut, and I may dedicate an entire video to this interview, so let me know if that's something you want to see. Whatever the case, things are starting to get interesting, with this perhaps being a sign that this real-life situation 
situation is finally being turned into a work. And again, I have to reiterate that Punk is unlikely to have gone into business for himself given the reported NDAs and non-disparagement agreements in place. That is unless he's choosing to enter into a legal process. And before you go, make sure you check out who the surprise could be at the debut episode of AEW Collision. 